All right. So we'll go Vermkin with the uh, the Echo there. The only clans that we did not get paired with were Melting Remnant and Stygian Guard. I am so hesitant to just jump into Melting Remnant. Let's let's go with Stygian Guard for the moment. Maybe. With the foregone power start. Hey Shadow Blood, good to see you. Thank you very much for the uh Twitch on subscription, Nick. Uh, Nick R S M N. Enjoy most in chat. And welcome to Republic. Okay, we have two copies of Proclamation, two copies of Ice Tornado, a single Broken Memories in the base deck. Return a consumed spell to the top of your draw pile. Okay. Probably going to be looking to try and upgrade things with Consume. Ooh, gain an artifact for 15 shards. Worth a hell of a lot. The Shellsmith. Summon. Add bounding echoes to your hand. Etch. Apply four armor to friendly units. Okay. So bounding echoes applies infused to all cards in hand. <clears throat> and the etch is triggered when a card is consumed on this floor. Oh, wow. So this is like very, very much built into consumption as a mechanic. Hunger Fange, thank you very much for the uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Enjoy Mods and Jan, Welcome to the Republic. Do you know Monster Sanctuary? I'm familiar with it existing. Shadow Blood. I'm not uh, not necessarily directly familiar with it at all myself, though. Cicado, thank you very much for the uh, gift of 5 one subs in the community. To Destronet, to Narnian, to that... Uh, that damn coyote, sorry. To Bane 10 and Arkham Dagson. Enjoy Mods and Jan, Welcome to the Republic, y'all. As well as thank you so much, Cicado, for the uh, generous donation of us. <clears throat> Apply four armor to friendly units. So the reason I want to take the Shellsmith right now is just because I've got the Stygian Guard as my secondary clan. And having both of those seems like a really, really good way to have a super overpowered kind of uh, incant law. And then there's Echo Right return a random consume spell to hand. This just seems more exciting. <clears throat> Dane says, uh, that's Dane Lawton. Uh, says, Rhapsody Plays, what's the uh, best game of 2021? The re release of Disco Elysium. <laughs> I, unfortunately, I, I can only say all of the ones that. Oh, oh. Darkest Dungeon 2. It's going to be Darkest Dungeon 2, probably. Because they were an ambitious team, like, scrapping it together for the first game. But now they are pretty well established. And they have the experience of having designed all of Darkest Dungeon at their heels. Yeah. Darkest Dungeon 2. Or Silk Song. Silk Song's another one in there. that too. Oh, lost luggage. At the start of battle, draw until you have 10 cards. I love this. Uh, it is, it is so good. You can get out a ridiculous amount of power on turn one. Get out a lot of incant units on turn one. Love it. <gasps> Notice stone. When a card with consume is played, all cards gain plus one magic power for the rest of the battle. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine Rhapsody in Disco Elysium 2. I've been imagining almost nothing else since I played Disco Elysium 1. Non-boss enemy units enter with spikes 3. That's not a problem for me at all, is it? <clears throat> trying to think, are there any other super exciting projects from next year that I'm not thinking about at the moment? Oh, that new Arcane, uh, Arcane Studios game, the, the Deathloop one. I'm actually really interested in that. Unfortunately, because it's a first person perspective game as well. It, 
There are so many games I want to play with the Wholesome Verse or like propose a series with people in the Wholesome Verse that I just can't do because I'm here in Australia and everyone else is not. Real annoying. <laughs> Oh my god, Echo Rider's always gonna have bounding echoes hit everything in the first hand. Oh my god, that's great. Okay. Do I. Do I pry, uh, try and set up on the middle floor? I might have to gamble to try and kill someone in time. Easy fix, move everyone in the wholesome verse to Australia. I mean, we could probably find some property out near Nimbin. Pretty cheap. Wouldn't be able to get internet quality for anything if that... You know, this is fine. Who needs internet if you're an online creator? DD2 is soon TM, so we can look forward to that. Yeah. I... Yeah. Yeah. I would really... I feel like DD2 might be, like, a really good time for me to push hard on Twitch again. Like, as hard as I pushed for the, the partner push. I think that's... I mean, think of that for a while, actually. Okay. So the setup here clearly requires Echo Right and a train suit to be on the same floor. And that much is clear to me. If I try and set up on the bottom floor, I can actually skip a wave and I'll still be fine. But then I'm gonna have some difficulty taking out the collector. Collector is a possibility. 15. Okay. Okay, right goes here. We consume that to infuse something. So the idea here should be double foregone power sets up for a proclamation. Thank you. And then we'll use two train stewards to get the kill here. So now we've got both of the top floors open. Okay, no, I should have set up on the top floor if I was doing that then. Whoops. Can someone post perhaps a Discord link? Exclamation mark Discord will get you that, Shadowblood. Hey, never mind. All sold that ends well there on the bottom floor. Or top floor, rather. Uh, Ice Tornado Proclamation. I mean, if we went Proclamation first, we could easily clear. Four plus... Oh, right, yeah, because we've already exhausted a card. I honestly think my win might actually just be Ice Tornadoes. Right, they're permafrosted. They're going to remain in hand at the absolute least. I'm gonna consume spell to the top of your draw pile. Fine. Play that there again next turn. Awesome. Right, so what is your favorite playthrough series of your own on YouTube? Of my own on YouTube? It is Dark, uh, Darkest Dungeon. Sorry. I mean, Darkest Dungeon. Not Color of Madness, because. I actually disliked the new content in Color of Madness. I didn't dislike it. I just didn't like it as much as I did the uh, the Blood expansion before it. Oh my god, I'm going to forget the name of the Blood expansion. Uh, the Crimson Court. There we go. Uh, yeah, the Crimson Court was quite good, but uh, Disco Elysium. It's, my answer to that is always Disco Elysium. I... I think... I think... Playing and commentating that game actually changed the way that I approach my channel and my job. I liked it a lot. That was that was a very very fulfilling series for me to do. So, what if you make a new Dark Assumption series with Dark Assumption series uh, two coming soon? Uh, soon. I want to, but there are so many games at the moment. My favorite of yours is Disco Elysium. Your voice is on that one. Made it as good as it was. I 
I, I appreciate you saying so. That was one of my favorite things about it as well. But uh, also, as soon as I heard that the remaster, the the update, the kind of like game of the year edition, etc., of of Disco Elysium was going to have full voice acting, I was actually a little hurt for a second. Not how could they do this to me? Oh, whoa, etc. No, but it was more like I I was hurt because. I figure I'm gonna play through it again. Obviously, there's more stuff in it. Probably on Twitch, I imagine, at that point. Maybe not on Twitch, actually. Long diatribes would take very long on Twitch. But I do want to play through it. But I'm not gonna be able to do the voices. Because they'll, they'll have voices in it. Uh, that was the thing I was gonna bring to it. Uh, Bounding Echoes, we just want consume cards. Infused to play a spell weakness. I mean, there's an appeal to that. It's it's good for the proclamation. They just took your entire voice acting and you'll get the check soon. Oh, whew. God, I was worried they'd been ignoring my submissions. To be honest though, there are, like, as soon as I got over that, it was monum like, monumental, sorry, it was a infinitesimally small period of time to get over that. Um, but as soon as I did, I was immediately hyped about hearing some of the lines that I had read actually spoken in the voice of the character. Like, for instance, I would really like to hear how Kim respond. I don't want to spoil the game for people. There is a sad thing that happens to a working woman at some point in the game and Kim is talking to you about it after the fact uh, and I really 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 want to actually hear him voicing those lines so we've all watched I can't take that for granted okay Plus eight magic power on this floor from the mollusk mage. We can, uh, we can, we can put that into someone. Oh, crumbs. Oh, so just joining us. This is the first run. This is my first run of the day. I'm playing the exiled champion, Echo Right. Uh, I have taken a path that has summon, add bounding echoes to your hand, etch, add uh, four armor to friendly units. This is actually a really hard decision because this is infused. Obviously, I like infused cards. It's also free. I like some free cards when I'm trying to do some sort of a, a incant style build. This is attuned, so every time I get a magic power, it's actually getting increased by five damage. That's significant. And then obviously the mollusk mage is here as well. Okay, let's let's have a look. Wormkin banner and the Merchant of Steel are over there on the left-hand side. The Merchant of Magic and the Stygian banner are over on the right. I could see a world where I go to that Merchant of Magic with the extra money I have at the moment, 225. Uh, we pick up a Stygian unit. We use the Divine Temple immediately to put the Mollusk Mage into the Stygian unit, getting plus eight magic power on that floor. And then I use the Merchant of Magic to decrease the cost of both of the Ice Tornadoes. Would you recommend I go into Disco Elysium blind? Asks Dane. Uh, or would I be able to watch your playthrough without losing the magic? Go in blind. 100% blind. Uh, I, 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 I have to make the recommendation that I feel is sincerely the better experience. And learning... Learning the context. <laughs> there is a Ludo narrative consistency to starting that game and being unaware of everything surrounding you. I think is the best way I could possibly phrase that. Hey, Silapap. Welcome. I don't want to ignore the Wormkin banner, though. 
But at the same time, like, this is very much a Stygian... But I don't want to just make it a Stygian in camp build. I've done a million Stygian in camp builds. How do I avoid that happening? Make it an incant slash reap build. That's one way to do it, right? Instead of using frostbite as the secondary support. Will the Stygian unit get in the way of unit drafting? Not necessarily. Hang on. We'll check one more thing. Wormkin, Stygian with a Divine Temple. So if I went for Stygian, Stygian, I could try and put a Stygian unit in a Stygian unit, try and double stack in cants. It's just I also don't want to kill the run by trying to do a new thing, because that's what I did on the first run of the uh, last. Why Rannick says, uh, well, got to do such silly things as sleep. Thank you very much for the bits. Sleep well. The shell units get the buffs when they hatch. Uh, they get enhancements. They get uh, stones and uh, essences that have been applied to it, but they do not get buffs. If you're using buff as a broad overarching term for all of those things, they get some of them. They don't get the keyword buffs. I need an attune spell in the deck. Took me a while to get around to that, but we just need it. Double stack, plus 10, negative one. Okay, pretty much all good costs there. Here's the Divine Temple. Not gonna be able to engage that pack though. Okay. So here's the problem. We'll show the essences. Uh, gives plus 10 and incant armor 2. Or gives plus 10 and revenge apply frostbite 3 to enemy units. Yeah. yeah. So. <sighs> the problem here is if we take Titan Sentry, we just have frostbite builds. If we take Guard of the Unnamed, we're lacking damage on that floor. So how are we going to support the damage? We can leave ourselves open to support the damage later. Oh, I feel nervous about doing that. I feel fairly nervous about that. Okay, double stack. Not really useful for anything I'm currently holding. Proclamation's getting the extra damage here is pretty exciting, but even more exciting than that is probably the Titan's Gratitude getting one. But before any of that happens... Upgrade a spell with plus 30 magic power or plus 10 magic power and piercing. Plus 10 and piercing could be the Titan's Gratitude upgrade. You could have taken Shock Shock. I hear, but I... But... Oh no, I can't do it though. So having piercing on this means what? I mean, the frontline enemy unit is typically the unit with armor. Uh... It's, it's good against the possibility of spell, spell block, which happens relatively constantly. Could you stack the Titan Sentry into a Titan Sentry for revenge, apply six frostbite? Yes, you can, spare maps. Yes, you can. And that opens up so much interesting decision-making around the possibility of getting a Hellbent on floor two, right? Because then you want to get a Stygian, or Stygian, or rather, you want to get a unit that you possibly have the ability to just dupe, just so you can put it in itself, so you can try and double capitalize upon its benefit. I have noticed dashes in chat. Hey, Dash. The double stack didn't appear to add energy cost to the Wormkin card. Is that correct? I didn't see that happen, Johnny Drop Tables. I mean, it can't apply to any of those. What if I just go spell damage? What if we just do it? So if I need backline AoE, like we can support that with Ice Tornado. But 
But is Ice Tornado maybe the worst way I can support it? <laughs> maybe, but I still have to. Consume removal? No, I want... If anything, I want them to consume more often. Uh, return a consume spell to the top of your draw pile. So we could try and consume remove this and then try and give it hold over later. But that is a very slow consume generation. I feel like more powerful than that will just be upgrading <laughs> cards to consume themselves. Okay. Now... A big play here might be decreasing the cost of Titan's Gratitude and then giving it 150 extra damage. Extreme Stone and Tornado. So the Extreme Stone is the plus 30 magic power stone that's in the temple at the moment. If it goes in an attuned card, it deals five times as much damage. If it goes in Ice Tornado, it deals three times as much damage. So it actually loses out on damage there. It also loses out on consistency. Uh, and it's worth noting, Ice Tornado is often going to already be enough damage to kill a backliner, so any excess damage on those individual hits is going to be lost. Um, so I wouldn't really want to put in an Ice Tornado. Uh, if, if it goes in anything right now, it'd be Titan's Gratitude, or if I had an AoE card in hand, it'd go in that. Uh, like, a natural AoE card, one that just already hits everything, especially if it was X cost. <laughs> I'm gonna go all the way with this. Let's clown on him for a bit. We are spell deck now. We're dead, aren't we? <laughs> we're a spell deck, but we're about to die. Okay. Strike applies sap three to the applied unit. Uh, I do have the ability to guarantee a kill on the front line of this turn. I should try and set up on the bottom line if at all possible here. Okay. So proclamation will kill the front line for me. Let's return bounding echoes to the top of the deck. Get a train steward in the top line and middle as well. Hey, Maxwell, good to see you. Sorry, I didn't ask about the, uh, the, the hair yesterday. I got off stream and just immediately went to go and figure out what we were doing for dinner. We had hot dogs. <laughs> Homemade with, like, a, like a mushroom bechamel kind of, like, a sauce-ish situation going over the top. It's nice. Still hot dogs. I just love hot dogs. Very much kind of my, um, my, uh, guilty pleasure. What the heck's going on? So many new keywords. I'll explain any of them that I can to you. Uh, extract means it will take out charged echoes from the floor. Charged echoes are gained by playing starter cards or cards that have been buffed with infused. Infused is also one of the keywords. That is literally just the keyword for adding charged echoes to a floor. Um, there is a capacity of them at a total of four. At the end of a round, they'll be lost in the extra ones, at least. Okay. We're probably going to kill on this bottom floor anyway in a couple of turns time. Hey, Terrible Genu. Good to see you. First time in the stream? First time being caught in the stream by you. Hey, it's very much my kind of, uh, common refrain. I am starting to remember. Yeah, Titan's Gratitude is almost getting me killed by itself right now. That's not the one I made piercing. Okay. That's... Hmm. That's gonna be, um... That's not good. That's, that's, that's a bad... I wouldn't recommend doing that again. Okay. 
I... Did I kill this? No, we're fine. Of course. That's why I drafted that card. I was terrified. Uh, do, what can we do here? Haha, <laughs> power of knowledge, interesting. It's also a bog fly. Hmm. Are you going for 100 uh, part points? As in the shards? Yeah, I'm definitely going to be going for 100 shards. You're just trying to scare us? Exactly. It's, uh, it's intentional the whole time. Uh, plus 5 damage and plus 5 HP per charge on that floor. Bogfly would be really good to put in something like a Animus of Will. Bogfly with the bonus armor. Yo! Because Bogfly is one size, so if I put the Guard of the Unnamed into it, I just get plus 10 HP on it, and I also start get. Yo! That's something. But is it good? It's being offered in a spell draft right now, which means it's not nest like this this is not a banner unit. Because it's not a banner unit. I mean, I do have power of knowledge, right? Lost luggage. Wow. I I'm I so confidently said the wrong name because it was already on screen down here. So it's easier to get with lost luggage. But it's not going to commonly be out on turn one. Depends how many infused you can play on one floor in a turn. Let's also think about that, right? The capacity it ultimately ends up getting to is four. So it's getting plus 20, plus 20. Is that great? Is that good? Maybe on a unit with multi-strike. Probably not on this. Part of the reason I'm worried here is because Power of Knowledge already synergizes with the stuff I plan on doing with my deck. Gives me the ability to deal damage on my off floors as well. Oh, here's the clincher. Uh, I, I will be spending my 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 essence constantly. Yeah, it's not bog fly. It's either power of knowledge or nothing here. I want to take power of knowledge just because I still haven't had it really work, you know? I mean, it's infused. I can't have half of my deck discard other cards at random. It's it's not a tenable situation to be in. Gosh. I have so many ways of dealing the damage. I have so few ways of more consistently getting to the damage. Offering token doesn't fix that. Just in free incant as well as a card neutrality. Or card deficit, actually. Uh, Cherio, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime subscription. Enjoy your months in chat and welcome to the Republic. Take the money. Mm. Mm. Excuse me. First of kin. All right. Hang on. Maybe. Maybe it's time. Okay. First of Kin has the etch keyword, so putting it on the same floor as the Echo right makes a whole lot of sense. I could also just put the other card into it. That is to say, the Guard of the Unnamed can go into the First of Kin here. Uh, First of Kin is going to etch to gain plus five, and then literally all it needs is multi-strike until we're suddenly having a real good time. Now, I will say, this is three cost, which is rough. Oof, that hurts. Uh, I can see a world where, like, taking Nameless Siren and then buffing Nameless Siren with the Guard of the Unnamed is the better play. But this is the newer play. And I'm gonna take the newer play. So if I lose, 
Just know it's not because I'm bad, it's because I made this decision, and it's definitely not because I keep accidentally leaking damage against bosses. Don't look at me. It's another Vermkin there. I'm more keen on the Vermkin now that I know that I'm uh, going for a multi-striker here. Incat gain two armor. That's a pretty good upgrade for it as well. Hey, Blank, how's it going, bud? Good to see you. It's very kind of you to say, Tedescu. Hmm. Alright, Divine Temple, what do you got for me? So the pact is putting the... Should I put the first of kin into the guard of the unnamed? Can you upgrade a minion and then infuse it for any benefits? No, the upgrades on the minion will be lost in the infusion. Why not put the edge essence in another unit? Honestly, literally the biggest reason I don't want to do that is because it seems like if I have the new unit like out on board and it looks like the new unit, uh, it, it will be... Uh, more positively received. It was... Like, I can imagine a world where it seems like I'm not using the new mechanics just because they're not necessarily visible on screen. They are a enhancement of something else. Don't owe anyone anything? I mean, I also... I, I found that, like... I found over the course of my time playing stuff on YouTube that uh, the way that I explore new content is... Like, it works for me in my own pace, but it doesn't work for content at all. Uh, and forcing myself to use new, new things, rather, does get me up to stuff pretty quickly. So I think it's... I, I think it's ultimately good. I don't necessarily think it's something that I owe someone, but I think it is actually the better way to go about it. It also comes out onto the board with 2020 less. Uh, 2040 less. So what, the, the upgrade is one extra pip plus two extra cost for a 2040 upgrade? Oh, sorry, Rawson. Like the evil, thank you very much for the gift of a tier one sub to the community, to uh to Mad Mike Dog. Mad Mike Dog, enjoy your emotes and chat and welcome to the Republic as well as thank you, Blank. Uh I hope I haven't missed that. Oh, I think I did miss one. Tedesco, thank you very much for the tier one subscription. Enjoy your emotes and chat and welcome to the Republic. Sorry, some of these are not necessarily coming up on the uh, board. I mean, Etch is going to be hard to scale with initially, right? I'll be honest, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I know this is probably not the correct way to go about it, but I am going to do it. It also makes it much more resilient against just not getting a good opening turn. Probably should have looked at this first, eh? Glug Cider. Extract four. Inspire. Triggers whenever a... Echo is added. Yes, for each Echo added, restores 5 health. As Revenge, apply Reap 5 to the attacking unit. Using it as an Essence gives you Revenge, apply Reap 5 to the attacking unit, as well as plus 20 and plus 2 in capacity. I... I, I can't use that. Right? Like, it's new, but it's not what this build can do. Do I try and pivot? I don't... Can I pivot? Yeah, he costs four Echoes to play, so I have to get four casts on an empty floor. How do I cast four things on an empty floor? I guess, like... No, Bounding Echoes is not going to be infused by the time I play it. I can't Echo Break anything that hasn't got a target. 
So maybe if I put like a train suit down and then start echoing that, Foregone Power can start building it up. So it's like the first time this will get played is in the second cycle. And by then, what is it doing? You know what it is doing? It's making my life a lot harder. How's it doing that? Well, Glugsider is going to rely on me either inspiring to heal it back up. I don't actually know if the inspire heal it back up is even relevant. I think it's like, you don't need to worry about that almost at all. Unless you're just healing it up to go against the boss. But the thing is, like, Glugside, therefore, is just for Relentless Phase, right? But First of Kin, with Incant gain armor 4 and Etch armor 4 to friendly units, is already our boss killer. We already are very strong at what Glugsider gives us the ability to do. Just joined the stream and I was wondering if you could explain the new clan. Also, I love your voice and bits. It's very kind of you to say. Um, the new clan is based around managing an extra resource called Echoes. Uh, that are floor individual. You accrue them on individual floors and you expend them on individual floors. Um, yeah, that's like their big thing. Honestly, like a lot of the new things aren't even the new clan. I keep leading in all titles and, and posts about it with like new clan, new clan, because that's kind of like the grabbing thing, you know, but the shard system is so much more impactful to me right now. That's for a later run. I can't do it now. Okay. All units come in with uh, extra HP. Seems pretty good to me. Yeah, give me the petrified heart. I'm not going to be healing up other, other than that. I think the fusion didn't work. The worm doesn't seem to have an incant trigger. Uh, the incant trigger doesn't show up on the card. Does it? Like, it doesn't modify the text of the card when you... when you socket one. Maybe it'll do that later. Have you gotten to Divinity on C25 yet? Uh, no. Not yet. I've, uh... I, while I'm learning the new things, I'm still playing on C15. Triggers don't show up on cards for space reasons. Ah, okay, cool. Now, incant for the armor two. You are well and truly all the tank you ever need to be. Can't give you the quick. I need multi strike on you to actually have some reach. How nutty am I? Not nutty enough. Not nutty enough. The Glugsider seems good with the champion that creates candy on strike. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you could combine the Glug dude to give a unit 200 HP? Uh, no. It doesn't just give it stats. They have essence. So, like, uh... Here you can see the train stewards give plus 5, plus 15. But their stats aren't plus 5, plus 15. It's plus 5, plus 8. Right? So it's related to the spirit of the card, but not necessarily directly. What's threat level? So as I take early pack shards, I'm increasing the difficulty of the enemies so that I can try and get some benefit at the time. Um, and the pack shards uh, being very high at the moment is representing a high threat to me. So I'm going to have a lot of very buffed enemies. In this fight. You can see here, this clergyman is attacking two times and has plus four, plus four on its base stats. Also, the boss was empowered by it as well. As much as I want to set up on the bottom line, I also don't at all.
How much can I do here? Take out one, take out two, take out third, try and frostbite if we happen to discard the right cards. I wonder if I just want the incant triggers more than any of that. <laughs> okay, this is good floor though. Uh, the infused guards in hand, sure. I should probably just hard cast as much as I can here. Um. More than fine with losing that. Single Echo Break, single Echo Break, as well as a Foregone. It's me. So can you put Dante on a Glug Slider? Yep. Any minion on any minion. It all works. Power of Knowledge is doing reasonable at this point. In fact, it's actually doing extremely well. Get that giant unit down with it. Uh, two more encant triggers on that floor. Not really super consequential. Start from taking out enemies. Flicker Lick would be a high roll here. Uh, Flicker's Licker is only available if I'm playing Melting Remnant. I'm almost certain that's a Melting Remnant exclusive. If I'm wrong, I apologize for it. Pretty sure. Hundred and seventy, hundred and ninety-five. Honestly, the reason that I should have taken the uh the infused card that gave spell weakness to a target literally would just be so I can nuke flying bosses. But it would be an amazing high roll. Yeah, oh god, if I could get cross clan synergies in that way, oh my god. We could high roll it out of control. Got him. <laughs> Harness the Titan! and armor on you. It's extract five, but it doubles armor and buffs on a unit. I, like, this will get us ridiculous armor on the top floor if we use that. Fine. Honestly, it, Harness the Titan would be a lot more exciting if it wasn't for all these GD foregone powers in the deck. Symphony of the Soul, double armor and buffs. Amphids, you're right. Deep Offering does say consume. Don't we have a cap of four echoes? You can go over on a turn and spend them on that turn. It's at the end of the turn that you have uh, the excess lost. So to be just double cost reduction on deep offering. Isn't multi-strike from one horn's tome buff? No. It's a status effect, I think. I already suggest this to you, do a custom challenge. I I saw Shadow Blood. Um I'm doing this at the moment. A little sad that I have to take that one now. Nameless Siren God. This, this would be good. Putting an incant, gain one armor, uh, one rage on him. Buffs are green, yes. Buffs are green in this game. Can you add more than one essence on someone? No, unfortunately. Otherwise, this Nameless Siren would have been snap-picked. Unfortunately, we also don't know when the DLC actually comes out, Shiva.
Do I want to set myself up for a Titan Sentry on a secondary floor? Providing some pre-AoE. There's another Stygian banner there. Okay, there's Divine Temple all the way down here. So we don't have the ability... Wait, no. Oh my god, we do. So we could go to the Hell Vent, dupe the Titan Sentry, and then just put the Titan Sentry in the Titan Sentry right now in this Divine Temple. So it would have 55 HP, apply Frostbite 6 to enemy units. That's... Duping the broken memories, though? Really? Like, yeah, it's more consume triggers, definitely. And I mean, broken memories can fish, broken memories can fish, broken memories can fish, broken memories, right? But it feels like AoE is going to be the thing that lets us down. We have individual target removal on lock. Got rocks and moxie, and we're rocking some brand new soxies. But what we're missing... So we got... We've got individual large unit. We've got boss... We've got scaling HP. We've got scaling-ish damage. We're missing sweep. Shark goes on the bottom, and then we go for the top. What we might have to do here is go energy. I really, really strongly dislike this. Uh, I don't... I'm really kind of frustrated that I have to do this in particular. Because I have to do it so that if I get the Titan Sentry in the Vermkin in the opening hand, because I'm drawing 10 in the opening hand, I have to be able to play both of them. <clears throat> Draw is clearly the far better one there in all other respects there. Shame. If I could guarantee that this would give us a Titan Sentry, I could go that way. And then we could get a Herzl's Horde and an Unstable Vortex. Those would be really good. Actually, the next area... The next area has a Merchant of Trinkets. So getting money here isn't bad either. The, the thing we desperately do not want to do is create a second floor that is also an incant floor, right? So going over here and getting a... Like, literally anything except for the shark is bad. Is real bad for us. What does the other shark do on infusion? It gives another revenge trigger for plus three uh, frostbite to enemies. Uh, it also gives plus ten HP. Shame. Did Titan Sentry always have zero damage? Great spell to gain intrinsic. Don't necessarily need to. Shock and shock. It always had zero damage? Uh, okay. Upgrade our champ. Resolve. Return a random consume card to hand. That does... That does seem good. That seems really good. That seems kind of essential. The Shellsmith level 2 is just significantly worse than the Repeater. What's intrinsic again? Intrinsic means it is guaranteed to be in your opening hand. Town Bronx. Eight armor though? Yeah, eight armor, but this will happen far... Like... We currently etch for four armor, and we do it like three times over the course of the entire fight. This will make it happen every turn. I wonder if this is the champion where hybridizing is the biggest thing that you have to constantly do. I like it.
Ran out of coffee. It's time for water. Vermkin still needs to go out, but we're probably taking a, uh, a scourge from that absolver. Who's my... Who's my... Da -da -da, Arcus. Okay, so it's not even Fell Scourge. We'll set up Echo right in first of kin on the top floor, literally just so that we have some catch for a collector. Chomp. You go on the bottom line, and then we can proclaim. Yeah, of course that's not enough. But it did leave both the permafrost cards in hand, baby. Our spell that scales off of consume is going to be a little weaker if we're constantly drawing out its contents, says Faman. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's also not even slightly a concern for me. Ah, uh, the result tree didn't happen because you're on the top floor. Whoopsie. Doopsie. I would rather have access to them to play more commonly than, like, bank on the value of a card that is way less in damage than a bunch of other cards that I have that don't need such conditionals on them. Although, that is a good point, right? Every time I consume one of them, I'm still getting magic power. So I'm only getting more powerful, really. Broken Memories into Broken Memories and Infinite? No, Broken Memories puts the card on top of your deck. Titan's Gratitude is great here on the bottom line as well. Love it. Oh, this is all working so well. Okay. Play infuse the cards in hand. Give me back that card. I'm gonna nuke you. Yeah, let's get started on you too. Why not? Oh. How broken would it be if purge also counted for consume? That would make the twin spell the new twin spell upgrades, really ridiculous. Like, actually patently insane. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't want to take that if I can avoid it at all. You're going to be healing. Playing that on that floor got me no benefit. Hell yeah. Let's pop the one with Infuse back atop the deck. And then let's so we'll go for a deep offering. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good armor. Pretty good stats there on the top floor. And we haven't even been focusing it at all. Okay. Obviously consume on the top floor. I mean, if the backliners are already dying, it's just... Throw out as much frostbite as I can. Does Infuse stack on a single card? No, Drago, it doesn't, unfortunately. I asked the same question myself yesterday. Come on, man. Up to the top floor. Ah, uh, oh, no. They almost lived. What 
do you do when your cup runneth over? Return Soul will give me a card back in hand that has infused negative one cost and consume. If I fish for good cards, I'm consuming them. I don't necessarily want to do that. Ambient Charge. Extract three. Draw three. Apply consume to drawn spells. Gives me the ability to consume some of my bad spells as well. Wormkin Etchings return five consumed spells to the top of the draw pile. It is rare, but I think I agree. I think I agree, uh, Shadow Stalker. I think Wormkin Etchings might be the worst one available here. Hey, what's up? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Wormkin Etchings might be the worst one here because it's slow. It's much slower than the other two. And we are quite quick. Also, I would have to have five consumed spells before that's actually super valuable, right? Wormkin would be amazing if it returned to hand. It would be broken if it returned to hand. You would be able to infinite, uh, non-trivially. You barely have five consumed spells, yeah. I'm, I'm likely to continue trying to get more. It feels like draw is what we're lacking. Both of these are pseudo draw, in a way. I really wish I could... If Ambient Charge had the infusion on it, I would have already clicked it. Divine Horde. There's a hell vent over on the left, but with the amount of money, we're going to the Merchant of Trinkets on the right. Okay. Urchin Spines is really good here. Guardian Stone has... Yep, in can apply on one to friendly units. Neat. I'm taking the Urchin Spines though. Excuse me? <clears throat> what's, uh, what's the voice of the last divinity? What do they sound like? <laughs> like, there's two directions to go with it, right? Some sort of, like, booming deity presence, right? Uh, and then the alternative is to try and, like, really downdress it, right? And I'm thinking, you know, Edwin. I'm thinking your, your Choose Goose. Time has never held sway over my existence. <laughs> that kind of thing, right? <laughs> Let's go more serious than that. <clears throat> Time has never held sway over my existence. What would pass as seconds for me are mere eternities in this world. Your existence is of little consequence. And yet, you were able to take the child and the mother from me. I do not feel as you small beings do, but I did contract. So I've contracted time to a circle. There is no end, only beginning again, forever. Replace your precious pyre or leave hell to freeze. It has no meaning. You're doomed to repeat your struggle over and over. This is your punishment. Even my own defeat. Temporary. Submit. Choose a divine artifact. Obviously. Obviously. When you play a card with Consume, all cards gain plus two magic power for the rest of this battle? Remove after one battle? What? Does it remove my Notice Stone? Does it... 
They're short-lived artifacts. So wait, if I clicked this one, do I get another notice stone, but it's like a temporary notice stone, but this and this one trigger at the same time? Do I get three magic power? Or does it just temporarily buff the one that we have? I mean, like, I'm going to click this one. Your pyre was created here, did you know? The titans of the elements created by the mother to carve out this very world. Sacrificed at Herzl's request and fused into the very life force you carry aboard that vehicle. All that sacrifice. For what? That buff should be separate. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ham on uh, pack shops from now on. Huh? Merchant, what you got for me? Whenever. <laughs> With that, thank you. God, totem fragments pretty wild here too, isn't it? So is pyre stone housing, if I'm completely honest, right? More, uh, more in can armor, more multi strike possibly here. Oh, didn't get to read it. Sorry. Uh, when a spell with consumers played, gained an echo. Hey, Real Kingdom. Good to see you. Totem Fragment's also really good. Basically, if any minion gets past me, blow them up on the top floor. Trivially, in fact, blow them up on the top floor. Oh, man. Is it Totem Fragment or Reroll? I don't know yet. I should not have taken that yet. Ooh, okay, new event. A pillar of light spews strange fragments into the air, making the way dangerous, making the way ahead dangerous. The Bone Shaker grinds to a halt on its own, perhaps recognizing the odd power emanating from the pillar. The air is stale, imperceptible, even. No longer stinging with the outer chill, but also devoid of life entirely. You feel the urge to hold your hand to the light, unsure of what may occur. But something in the back of your mind urges caution. Oh, but the light does beckon. And do you listen? Have you done voice acting? It's very kind of you to uh, say that, uh, Terrible General. I, not the question, but after that it says you're talented. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I have... Well, I, I technically voice acted for a Half-Life 2 mod that never got released. So, ish. I did, um... I did the, uh, the G-Man. Merge two spell cards or purge a spell. Create three copies of unhinged power. With unhinged power, sorry. Reduce zero cost apply purge. Merge two spell cards. Merge. You voice acting your own videos? Is that self-employed voice acting? I, 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 I think when people think about voice acting, they're, they're thinking about kind of like an air of legitimacy being applied to it from, you know, working in some sort of a traditional media. Whether or not that spans all the way from, you know, uh, voice acting in a AAA game to voice acting in a fan dub for an anime. Sup, Sai? Choose a spell to merge. This spell will remain in your deck. You also did some supplemental voice for some jerk playing Disco Elysian. That's true. That is true. Well, except for the jerk part. Don't be mean to my friend. Um. Gosh. So, will the, will the, uh, will the, 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 like, complete text of both of the cards be, like, joined? That is to say, will something say consume now, if I add a consume card to something else? Or does this give me the ability to multiplayer consume card? 
It casts one and then the other. Oh, so it's like the um God, there was a there was a Slay the Spire modded relic that did that. Right? You keep both spells you put in, you get the number and text, the new spell always consumes. Duct tape? No, 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 I wasn't thinking of duct tape. Duct tape does do like the, the jumping together, but I thought you were saying like both cards stayed in the deck and if you cast one, it would cast the other one as well, which was a different modded card. But yeah, it is more like actual duct tape. Spines then gratitude is a lot of damage, yeah. But like 450 damage on a single target for a single spell. Actually, it always consumes. It's coming back. Okay, hang on. It always consumes. It's coming back to hand. It always consumes. It's coming back to hand. Uh, ambient Charge is one of the two cards. 100% Ambient Charge is one of the two cards. Friggin' Broken Memories is not allowed to be? Doesn't keep spell upgrades? That's even more reason not to use uh, the the gratitude then, right? Ambient charge urchin spines? Does the order matter? This spell will remain in your deck. Does the order matter, right? Does it cast the card that I click first first? Because if it does, maybe I need to think about it. Does Infuse get passed on? Charge Spine seems really good. It does to me. Ambient Deep Offering. Ambient Deep Offering. Ambient Deep Offering. That's a hell of a lot of draw and it's quite expensive. Will it cost the cost of both of them added together? Because that's, that's important. It costs two. It costs exactly two. So I could then go Deep Offering and Ambient Charge together. Play out a bunch of cards in hand. Play that at the end of the turn. Play out a bunch of zero more, uh, more zero cards. If I double cost reduce the Deep Offering with Ambient Charge in, like... It's literally just refill your hand with eight cards. Does it matter which spell you choose first? Yeah, okay, so if, if the first spell is the one that's cast first, then Deep Offering has to go first, right? Because I don't want to draw and then discard the cards from Ambient Charge. So order has to matter here. Amphids. Amphids, what, what order do I have to click these in for that to not suck? <laughs> How does extract work? Uh, you use extract. Extract is just the keyword for paying echoes that you already have on the floor. Or candy that you already have on the floor. First spell happens first, second spell happens second. Thank you. Entranced, you reach into the unknown power and the light consumes you. Flashes of Hellborn and humans and those of heaven flicker past in this strange pocket realm. As if refocusing it, their life force can be felt like molten brands in your head. And looming beyond it all, a booming darkness unlike anything you've ever felt. A void of life and death and goodness. The divinity. When you pull your hand out, a remnant of the all-powerful divinity comes with you. You now know... You know now, you are not alone. Sweet! I think I take that artifact as well. Let's have a look at the... Wait, I keep both of the original cards as well? That's dirty. <laughs> 
What the hell? It has to be Echo Seedling. As much as the improved firebox is interesting, it has to be Echo Seedling. The first time you, uh, the first time each turn, a card with Consumer's Blade add a copy to hand. Do I have any X costs? I don't think I do. No, what? Not a shame. <laughs> should have, uh, should have checked this first with the Guild Marker, eh? Whoops. We're on floor five. We could probably still use the Guild Marker a little bit. What are the X costs we can get? Honestly, the X costs in these clans are not necessarily anything I want. Let's take the Merchant. Well, this was certainly an interesting game for a while, and then uh, we broke it. And now uh, it's going to be a slideshow for the rest of the game. Uh, oh my god. Oh, we actually can't. Wait, no, that's not the spike. Okay, no, we're good. We are all good. Okay. How do I want to set this up? We need more minion upgrades on the Titan Shark before it can really sit on the bottom line by itself for a while. We have no specific top floor effects at the moment. So setting up on this floor so that we can kill frontline units and then kill backline units with spells on the second uh, or third floor rather. Seems like the way that we want to go with this. So Echo Right, then First of Kin. I don't really want to return Bounty Echoes to my hand. But that's how I get the most etch triggers right now. And also, Urchin Spines isn't going to be necessary for these. Good. Do that. Again. God, I'm consuming a lot of cards right now. Is that okay? It is. Yeah, it's totally okay. In fact, it's optimal. Um, it's more infusing, thank you. Look at the stat gain already here. My god. Uh, okay, so I can kill the frontliner, and I can literally kill all of them right now with this. Let's just do it. Get styled on. Hey! <laughs> I'm glad you like it, Dane. My, uh, my request... Sorry, uh, Dan is talking about the, the Raps OD emote, which is the Raps singing emote. Uh, oh, can I bring it up on screen? I'm gonna try and do this very, very quickly, YouTube viewers. I do apologize, but it is real cool. I'm very, very pleased with the, uh, the emotes. Uh, Rap 10, that's the newest set of them. Do that there. No, no, no. Nation box goes there. Sing emote. What? No. You're the sing emote. Oh, wait, it's up in this corner. There we go. Boom. Uh, so the, the prompt that I gave to my emote artist for this was I want the Rhapsody character cradling a microphone like Freddie Mercury and belting out a note. Note, it needs to have radiant, chaotic by energy. Completely fulfilled. My emote artist is the best. Titan Century goes bottom line, obviously. Broken memories, get two more cards. Deep offerings don't really make sense here. Should have played the Bounding Echoes. No, I can't play the Bounding Echoes first because then I won't get the uh, right ones back. Okay. Every turn I just play Bounding Echoes twice. Yeah, this etch floor is... Uh... Woo! 
Yikes. Wow. You know? <laughs> Get him. Do I even want to consume this? Not really. Wait a second, did you take a shark and put it into another shark? Yes. Yes. I'm very proud that no one has yet said sharkception or anything like that. It felt like that, uh, that, that was like a meme that lasted a really long time. I remember when it was Exhibit saying that, not saying sharkception at least. Warm up. Warm up a little bit more. It was the kind of stand in for that, you know? These spells are doing pretty well, yeah. The fact that we keep just getting magic power for uh, spending all of these spells, as well as armor for spending all of these spells, and we are an infused deck, like, I, I couldn't be happier. Broken memories, broken memories. Give me another broken memories. You better believe I want that. <laughs> what is this? Do we even have like a tracker that just shows our magic power right now? Look at all these broken memories. What are we doing with this deck? Uh, give him Spell Weakness. Give him... Consume. Alright. <laughs> Go for a totally new hand. Perfect. Go for an Echo Break there, and then a Proclamation for roughly a billion damage. After abounding Echoes, of course. Yeah. 1,290 damage. It's doing okay, I guess. Uh, ambient charge to get an echo break that I won't be able to play. That doesn't seem... That doesn't seem good. Power of knowledge. All right. I have nine cards in the discard pile, so this is now approximately, um, damage. Delayed Decoy. Grant plus one stacks of reap each time it's applied. Nah. <sighs> Malay weakness, no. Ancient resonance, no. Soul cripple, also no. Probably just hard no on all of these. <laughs> this card with magic power. This card is infused, effectively, at all times, but it can hit all lines as well. Uh, so once you overdo the amount, you're you're really starting to really starting to knock people down. Obviously, it's also got infused as well, which is a small element for us. Honestly, not huge. Small. Coxie, thank you very much for the, uh, the tier one subscription for the third month in a row. It says, I see the stream is a train wreck again. Oh, this train is wrecking. Uh, also, sorry that I do think I missed uh, Almighty Echoes as well with the Twitch Prime subscription. Jory Mertz and Chat, welcome back to the, uh, welcome to the Republic, Rama. Uh, yeah, I want to go to the Merchant of Magic and double decrease the cost of the the power of not power, sorry, the 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 Nexus Spike. Consume removal. Why would I ever remove consume? It's good. Um, I could actually give the plus 20 magic power and consume to in, uh, the ice storm there as well and be pretty happy about that. So let's do that then. Holdover. Holdover ambient charge would be a lot of draw. Holdover Ambient Charge zero cost it as a lot of draw. Uh, 
<laughs> Burns out a hell of a lot of the deck as well, but uh, we'll ignore that for the moment. What does Nexus Spike do? So Nexus Spike was joining two cards together. I joined the Deep Offering and the Ambient Charge, uh, and they will cast in that order. So unfortunately, due to card size limitations, you can't necessarily see it on the card, but you can see Fragment 1, over and across. Uh, Deep Offering, discard your hand, draw 5, and then Fragment 2, draw 3, apply Consume to run spells. Um, if, uh, if, if there are... Divine Boons for 100 gold? Yeah, probably not. These train stewards are straight up trash in this deck right now. And they're really bad in the first cycle. They just stop me from getting to my important cards sooner. Okay, this is our opportunity to finally go to Merchant of Steel and look for a multi-strike of some kind. Ooh, but I want the Divine Horde. And then possibly even a Divine Temple afterwards. So yeah, okay, we'll skip. Divine Boon for the hard flex question mark. I don't, I don't know how hard I can flex before the final boss just kills me for having flexed too hard, you know? I don't know how hard I can flex before I give myself a blood block. We've got the Nexus Spike, but we don't have extra energy right now. But we have to play it this turn, don't we? Yeah, we have to. Echo right goes here. First goes here. Gets me a second copy if I play it. I can't actually even play it though. Unless we gamble. Two times. Are we that lucky? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Nice. Bound some echoes there. So because of that, I should have... Yeah, I've got a Nexus Spike consumed. Yeah, and I've also got one in hand, so we're going to be able to cycle back and get a bunch of them. Don't really want to cast on that bottom floor if I can avoid it, though. And don't really want to consume any extra cards if I can avoid it at the moment as well. Cool. Ah, uh, the resolve doesn't trigger on turn one. Whoopsie doopsie. Time Sentry really, really, really needs some serious HP buffing if it's actually going to be able to stand here. Alright, so I was going to watch your first VOD, but uh, then we have the stream, so you could at least explain the final fight when you get to it. That would help me out. I'll, uh, I'll definitely do so, Mad Dog. Definitely will do so. Okay. I don't like how this is looking so far. It's Echo Break and then Draw. At least they consume. It's broken memories. A do I want a Nexus Spike for the next hand? I'll get a Bounding Echoes afterwards anyway. How many times have you beaten the final boss so far? Both times I fought them, so two. Let's get broken memories as well. I think I might want to do just a Ice Tornado in this line, try and take out the Cool Marksman. Or try and rely on the Titan Sentry doing that, because then it'll also kill the Cool Marksman in the next line. Okay, cool. That's two line clears that we buy there. Come on, don't scout for Gorn. Thank you. But then I could just Ice Tornado on the on this line. Yeah. Okay. We've got our uh, ambient charge again. And then we've got a Nexus Spike afterwards. Honestly, we just need to zero cost a lot of these spells now. The more of them that are zero costed, the far more powerful we become. It's 
get another broken memories out there like as soon as next hang on Hear the gears whirring. I'm pretty sure we have an infinite here. So Broken Memories returns a consumed spell to the top of my draw pile. I have excess draw every single turn with the ambient charge. I can generate multiple Nexus spikes as well as multiple Broken Memories. That's card positivity. Where does the energy come from in our infinite? We don't use any energy. We zero cost the Nexus Spike and then everything zero cost. Remember the extract? That's totally fine. Most of our cards are infused, especially the Broken Memories. Probably not infinite. You'd need Forgotten Trade to get it. So Broken Memories is card negative ambient is two positive then the spike is eight positive literally like as, as soon as you have a card that for very little energy can draw as many cards as ambient uh, as, as the nexus spike can you've got a lot of considerations to make okay how do you get the spike and the broken memories at the same time? Uh, we would manipulate the consume pool by not playing other things like the bounding echoes and stuff like that. We'll probably consume every spell in the deck and make the kin a 500 attacker. Yeah, that the end goal of it would definitely be that, right? Because we'd be consuming most of it. Which means I would leave zero costs in the deck. Because their card negativity doesn't matter when you're drawing eight cards. So how does it work? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know how to make it... I haven't figured out yet how to make it infinite, but I know how to make it functionally infinite right to the point that we don't have to worry anymore and that is get two nexus spikes into the uh into the the consume pile as quickly as i can using the the wild seedling then when i get broken memories this is gonna have to get permafrost if i want to do this consistently then when i get broken memories use both broken memories to bring back spikes putting them atop the deck right so we end up with uh two spikes on top of the deck right as well as two broken memories in the consume pile that's a ridiculous amount of draw and we can do a bunch of stuff on that turn and probably cycle through the deck two times as we cut a couple more cards out but if we do that in one more cycle and in fact like use a broken memories to get back a broken memories on one of them like the wild seedling first broken memories gets the first broken memories that got cast and then the second one gets the nexus spike and then on the next turn we broken memories the remaining broken memories from the wild spike on the previous turn that's now in the discard pile and we also have a nexus spike in hand that immediately gets cast afterwards yeah, yeah, yeah okay we got it we got it it's it's pseudo at the moment but we've got it Sal, what's up, bud? Thank you very much for the raid. You get an exclamation mark, Sal, in chat, please. Sal, uh, Sal, I, I did, I did a bad thing. Sal, Sal, I, I, I did a thing. <laughs> this card draws eight. <laughs> Get the train steward out of here. Can foregone power to my heart's content. 
Let's just spike the whole deck out here. Nice. Okay, and then Broken Memories, a Nexus Spike back out, back atop the deck. Cool. Oh, I wanted to cast that one. Why? Deep Offering Nexus Spikes. Yeah, Deep Offering as well as the Ambient Charge. So it draws eight. Oh, also, we have the Notice Stone as well as the Bog Slime as well as Echo Seedling. So... It's going well, I think. Two hundred. It's uh, pretty good damage. It's reasonable, I think. Apply infuse to the cards in hand. Yeah, it seems like a good idea, but we'll do that on the etch floor. Ooh, not not to be able to cast that on this floor? Fine. Now we can. And then... Next to Spike and keep going. Ooh. Titan's Gratitude could be a good hit there too. Have to open it up with a Echo Break though. Do that. Nice. Oh, I'll probably just consume all of these and start going again. I don't think I'm done. Um, let's give you some spell weakness. Draw some more cards. Okay, okay, okay. 780 damage will end my turn there. How dare you cast limit me on the top floor? Oh. Oh, how, how absolute dare you? All right, top of my deck is going a Nexus Spike, and then the Broken Memories is going to get another Nexus, well, another Nexus Spike? No, let's get the damaging one. Let's get Proclamation. And then we'll draw them. Pop a Proclamation immediately. Throw a Nexus Spike to get a whole new hand. Whole new hand. Okay, there's another Ambient Charge if I really want to recharge right now. Looks like I want to. Ooh, Echo breaks it back. Good. Nice to see you. Power of Knowledge is now... It's reasonable, but it's still not enough to get the kill. It's getting closer, though. 440 plus 31. I'm just going to consume out all the trash cards that I can right now. Oh, Titan's Gratitude. I mean, <clears throat> Titan Gratitude. It's consume as well, so I'm just going to double cast that one. Let's go for an Echo Break for the kill this time. a lot of armor with symphony it is it definitely is but what if this instead i'll tell you what we don't need anymore it's draw we did it we found the deck that i don't need drawing oh god uh I really thought I was going to the Merchant of Steel here. I think I am, still. Perhaps I hope this comes up on YouTube because I gotta know the end, but I gotta sleep now. Good luck. 
Thank you, Juris. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will, I, I will be posting this to YouTube almost certainly. Uh, reroll looking for multi. Don't care about quick. Don't care about echo stone. Uh, unstable vortex. Let's get the two train stewards out of here. Really don't want to have to play them if I can avoid it. When a card is discarded before the end of your turn, gain an energy. What of it? Huh? What of it? Holy shit. Uh... <laughs> so the repeated two just gets extra stats. I guess I go Shellsmith too then. Get more armor. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards. Let me just uh, quickly submit some feedback here. Oh. Okay, apparently. Do that. Uh oh. Did I accidentally turn the stream on and off a bunch of times there? F8 is actually my start and end record button. Oh. First turn one divinity kill. Okay. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I, 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 we'll see. We'll see if we can do that. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll definitely. Woo, woo, woo. We're gonna try. See. Is, whew, you know? Okay. I mean, we can kill anyone right now. Set up on the bottom floor, whatever. Don't care. Uh. Do I gifts for a guard this turn to try and go off? Don't drop gifts for a guard. Acceptable. Don't drop gifts for a guard. Similarly acceptable. We still haven't triggered the Echo Seedling. Eh, that's not actually what I wanted to get out of that. I mean, Proclamation getting that buff is pretty good. Um. Okay, so this is this is this is not going to be a going off kind of turn. I will get a card back though, so I might as well just. Oh, that had consume? I didn't want to consume that one. Fine, guess we're going on a consume journey now. Uh, let's bring back that. That's extra energy next turn for the cost of cards. So as long as I get the spike, I'm okay. Didn't get the spike, but somehow I feel like we're still going to be okay. Got a feeling in my bones. I can catch that with the spell. Oh my god, can I have my draw cards, please? I mean, Deep Offering is a draw card, so why am I complaining, right? Actually, do I want to go with Ambient Charge first? Yeah. God, okay, Deep Offering, then. Bunch of energy for me. There's another card back in hand. Bounding Echoes to actually start consuming these. Okay. I'll proclaim a little here. Probably should have proclaimed first there. It's fine. Okay, as long as we infuse all these guards in hand and then go Gifts Regard. Gifts Regard won't come back, but I can try and get it to come back with memories later. Ice Storm is getting pretty good. We're also just generating enough value that we can win without, like, any problem or concern at all. There is... Uh, there is nothing that can stop us now. Does this clan have any X cost? Yes, there is the spike for... Yeah, as Ormato is saying, 5x3. 
not necessarily great with the uh, the way that I'm running my builds. Like it, it it's like, yeah, it, it would work, but it's much slower than all of the other effects I can accomplish the same thing with. Broken Memories is great here. We will get back our Nexus Spike. And just deliver death to every unit. Okay. All the extra draw again. Love it. Uh, still trying to consume as many of these as is possible. Discarded the wrong card there. Oh. But it happens. So we'll just nuke the backliner and keep going then. I wish to consume the whole deck, please. This is my goal. Nice. I think I've got decent stats here. But yeah, oh, Neffle would actually try and uh, give them a run for their money. Rude. Uh, so this is 70 times 5 is 350. 350. 350. Uh, tuned, echo, echo. Throw a ice tornado at that for good fun. I'd love to understand why some consume cards are just being discarded. Ooh, I might not have necessarily tracked that myself, advice. Try and keep an eye out for it. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Double removal still over here. The Merchant of Steel is our last opportunity to try and get multi-strike on the first of kin as well as upgrades into the Titan Sentry. Uh, however, that's also our last opportunity to make the Nexus Spike zero cost. Damn. What's the last pick? Uh, Urchin Spines. No. Forever Flame's actually pretty good. It saves us two energy on the first of the kin and one energy on the Titan Sentry, which means if I get the Nexus Spike early, like, I'm just going off on turn one. In fact, if I get any draw early, I'm just going off on turn one. And I'm more likely to get draw early because I am going to cut cards in this deck that are not draw. Obviously, Trader's Quill is Trader's Quill and Trader's Quill is hilarious. So we're taking that too. Dubly stack? I don't know if I... Well, I mean, Dubly stack for, for spell weakness. That's actually... That's some. That's something, something right now. Right? Have the ability to, on one floor in the Divinity fight, stack spell weakness on the Divinity, and then just nuke them. That's good. I'm pretty sure that's good. <laughs> Plus 10. You already consume. I mean, plus 10 isn't even really impactful on anything right now. Uh, Ember Stone decreases the cost of the Ember Spike further. The Nexus Spike further, rather. Let's reroll one. Consume removal. Okay. Is there anything that consume removal is actually kind of ideal on? It might be deep offering. Like... Cost reduce and consume remove deep offering just so I have the ability to always have a hand fix. Because deep offering is almost never the card I play at the start of my turn. Broken memories? Everyone's saying broken memories. Why is it broken memories over deep offering? Broken memories is often the first card I play, so it gets the 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 sap thing. I guess it does remain a zero cost. It's a good point to make for it. It'll gain consume again anyway. Wait, so thi things that have can't consume can still gain consume again back?
I... I was almost certain that didn't... That was a change, as in a change in this update. Because if it is, then, you know, this is... Significantly different. Mostly because of what you're doing. Okay. Well, why? But... It was changed in the DLC. Oh, well. Ah, it happens, I guess. Sure. Uh, further removals. It feels like the, the foregone powers are pretty hard whiffs and things I just want to remove, but so are all of the echo breaks, and the echo breaks do have a cost associated with them. Let me get all these echo breaks out of the deck. And then I would start on the others. <laughs> now it's a Rhapsody deck. I didn't even look at the Divine Temple yet. This is also pretty good. It's probably better. And then even more damage and piercing on Ice Storm, sure. Come on, Sarah. Let's fight. So we are setting up on the top floor. We'll be setting up Titan Sentry on the very bottom floor as well. Literally dies this turn if I put it down. You're disappointing all of us, Titan Sentry. play broken memories so that I get broken memories and then use broken memories to get broken memories good 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 feel like that's a comfortable start disregard oh deep offering as well love it uh let's proclaim go for an ambient charge getting those broken memories out of the deck then claim again, and then I'm gonna broken memories both of the proclamations back to the top of the deck. Okay. Okay. We'll throw a deep offering, drawing all of those cards again. Okay. So 40 by 5 is 200, that's already 290. So the correct ordering of these is this, this, 110, yep. Urchin Spines into Proclamation, and then a Power of Knowledge. Come back here, I dare you, I double dare you. Okay, Nexus Spike is uh, in this hand, so... So life's good, but we can start with the Ambient Charge. Okay, so the Consume got back on the, the Urchin Spines here. But if I double cast Consume, Seraph the Chase is just definitely going to die this turn. So I'll cast both of those. Okay, so I'll apply that to cards in hand, and then go for the draw. Literally just doing good damage in this hand. Uh, I want a single target damage for the Frontliner, and then a single target damage for the Backliner as well. We're currently lacking that. Okay, Broken Memories pulls back a Proclamation. Then we'll use Ambient Charge to draw into it. Oh, we actually killed just with the spikes there. Whoops. And then Proclamation for 3,060 damage. Nine turn boss rush. Okay. Let's go again. What's up, Lost Divinity? Okay, uh, Mad Dog Mike. 
The Last Divinity gives us the Shard of Divinity. The Last Divinity attacks your Pyre every turn. Its damage increases for every 10 pack shards we have. So it's got 14 extra damage at this point. Uh, the Shard of Divinity gives my Pyre 100 armor at the start of the battle so that I don't all like automatically start dying. Now, uh, the Last Divinity exists on all floors as a kind of like outside flying unit, but each of them has different bonuses. Uh, all of them have Purify after this debuff deals damage to this unit. Sorry, after a debuff deals damage to this unit, remove that debuff. Uh, then there's also Sweep on the top floor and Pyre Vengeance 17. So it starts at three base damage to the Pyre every single turn, but the plus 14 is why it's doing 17 total. Uh, and then in the middle floor, it's got Multi-Strike as well as 10 damage. And then on the bottom floor, it's got Trample. The next spike is in the opening hand. Would Sap reduce the damage deals to the Pyre? No, because Pyre Vengeance is not based on its damage. Pyre Vengeance is just a, a status that it has. No, 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 no. Okay, we can't cast Nexus Spike yet. To extract three, it's not infused. Come on. Nexus Spike remains. Come on. Lost the next spike. That's okay. Happens. Uh, how do we rebound? We can double Urchin Spines this turn for four spell weakness. That spine isn't coming back for a while. I think we do just do the uh, double urchin spines here. But I think the reason is so then we can use a broken memory it's just to bring back urchin spine, setting it up for the next hand. Let's consume that too. It's decent damage. It's not all the damage in the world, but it's decent. Broken Memories would try and dupe here as well. Unfortunately, I don't actually have the ability to get any extra cards in this hand. That's kind of actually wrong. It's fine. I'm going to double Urchin Spines, throw a Broken Memories, getting a Ice Storm? To try and help me clear the next floor as it comes up. We have another double urchins uh, lined up here. I like it. Let's do it. We'll double consume that, and then we'll bring back the upgraded one. Draw it out immediately. Play it again. Deep offering gets us to a Titan's Gratitude. It also deals 30 damage, and then I can play Bounding Echo and then use the Titan's Gratitude to hit the back line by myself. Alternatively, Gifts Regard is going to draw from my draw pile faster, so it's possible that it gets Titan's Gratitude and has the ability to do that there. And it does. Consume everything at hand. Titan's Gratitude now does 340 damage times 16. GG. Seven turn boss rush on the last divinity. Woo! Isn't it time 17? Yeah, it's 16 additional time, so it is time 17. Is Raps doing another run? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, don't.
Did they... Did they turn it off? Nexus spikes being deleted. Did did they turn the DLC off? No, it's just a bug. <laughs> 